So, hi everyone. Um, good afternoon. I hope you've all had a good lunch. Um, this may send you to sleep, but we'll see how it goes. Um, my name is Jason Norton from University College London. I am the Head of Virtual Learning Environments at UCL and also the Product Manager for Moodle and other applications. So, my talk today is primarily about Agile. Um, it had, it had a lovely grand title at the front there, but pretty much this is my subtitle. How Agile Practice Helped Us Deliver Our Best Upgrade Ever. And that's actually saying something, considering we've been on Moodle like forever, 1.6 and everything else going forwards. But this year, uh, the end of July, we felt as a, as, a, as a team, as an institution, that this was our best upgrade ever. And we pretty much owe that to the introduction of Agile practice at UCL. So a quick overview of what I'm going to run through. I'm going to talk about what Agile is and what it means to us at UCL, sort of what we did and how we introduced that practice at UCL, a few issue benefits and challenges, a couple outcomes, and then just sort of show you where we went with our site, hopefully wrapping up with a quick question at the end. So getting started, what does Agile mean? Can I just see a show of hands? Does it? Institutionally wise, not, not vendors or partners, but what institutions here actually use agile methodology in their teaching and learning teams? Very small amount. It's just, in the UK, it's the same thing. UCO is one, one of the first sort of pathfinders in actually transforming their um, information services into agile practitioners. So just a bit of history on UCL. About two years ago, we had a, a new CIO join the organization and he basically said, we're gonna move away from sort of traditional information services, um, waterfall approach, standard long-term projects, get rid of um, all, the, all the gumph that surrounds and slow people down and we're going to move to agile. Um, a lot of people think of agile as just a, a software development process, but it can be applied across an entire organization and that's what's happened within um, UCL. So agile methodology is a project management approach that involves breaking a project or a task into phases with an emphasis on continuous collaboration, improvement and development across anything. So we have teams that follow a cycle as it's on point of planning, executing those plans, evaluating the outcomes and then replanning and carrying on. Um, I've put sort of four items to draw out. One is Agile emphasizes flexibility, customer collaboration and continuous improvement. It promotes adaptive planning, short development cycles and regular customer feedback feeding into those development cycles. And the flexibility, which is a core nature of Agile, Agile being the name, um, makes it really suitable for the in, in learning technologies where we are constantly faced with a constant churn, a constant set of requirements, constant changes due, due to our academics requirements, due to teaching services requirements, due to administration changes. When you're working in a very large organization like UCL, there is always change happening. And previous methodologies would be very slow. Those long-term projects, you go, in two years, years we will be upgrading. Now we go, well, in a couple of weeks we can upgrade. So Agile as a whole is dictated by something called the Agile Manifesto. I'm not going to go into the, the details of that, but there, I will go into there are four key values in Agile. And I just want to sort of give an ed tech spin on each of them. So first of all, individuals and interactions over processes and tools. What that means for us. So this is sort of a team statement. We value the expertise and collaboration of our team members over rigid process and tools. We prioritize open communication in the team, active listening, and effective teamwork to create an innovative learning approach. And what this means is that we are constantly talking to each other. We are constantly engaging each other. We are challenging each other. We're questioning what we did, and we are in charge of what we do. Customer collaboration over contract negotiation. We believe in actively talking to our end users. Um, so many projects at my institution previously failed because they would just talk to those end users at the very beginning, get this massive grand plan and say, yeah, we're gonna roll out that system for you. And then when you get to the rollout of that system, it's absolutely nothing like what was originally specified. It's, there's been scope creep and the users go, well, this isn't exactly what I want anymore. Third, responding to change over following a plan. So we embrace change as an opportunity to improve and enhance our learning technology solutions. The team remains flexible and responsive to evolving educational requirements and adjust our plans accordingly. What this means 
in day-to-day terms is that when things change, the team can literally spin on a 5p, um, spin on a penny, if, if you know the term. We can very quickly adapt our styles, our teams. We can restructure very quickly. We can allocate resources without having to do long-term planning. And fourthly, we've got this working software over comprehensive documentation. Now, I'll change this slightly to working educational solutions over comprehensive documentation. So this means that we prioritize the development and delivery of the solution over doing documentation. Too often in previous project methodologies, we would walk over these massive manuals. We'd have to spend so much time on creating documentation and all of that would be done up front. And by the time we get to the end, most of it was already useless. So we actually prioritise on all those interactions now with those end users to create and deliver value rather than worrying too much about that massive documentation. Um, we have a bit of a, uh, yeah, it's good enough. So. so at UCL, as I said, we, have this, we had this restructure about two years ago. So we are across our information services group, we are broken up into portfolios and I am part of the education portfolio and my project, my product team is digital learning environments and within the, the basically the biggest piece of that digital learning environments is Moodle. As you see, we have you know, assessment and feedback, curriculum management, media environments, and each of these are separate product teams. The product team varies in size. So my product team is about 10 members, um, but we do flex, as I'll show you in the next diagram. So this is the structure of my product team. We have a permanent team, which is our site reliability and ops team, so operations. They deal with the sort of the day-to-day -day mechanics of making sure our environments work. They deal with the issues, the problems, the standard upgrade cycles. Um, when we have the transient teams, and this is where, where Agile becomes really important, because our transient teams exist to fulfill a purpose or exist to fill a feature requirement as we talk about at UCL. So we have, we have features and these features could be UI and UX. So one of the things that we did as part of our upgrade was we actually went with a whole new theme. So we went right, we don't have the specialization here, we'll spin up a new team to deliver that aspect. Um, the people involved in the upgrade were actually the, the SRE team, the training and communications team, and the user inter UIX team. Um, the course lifecycle team is, is currently an, another feature team in my product that is running on integration. So I'm, I'm not going to talk about them because we're, we're focusing on the upgrade. Now, as I said, we've only got about 10 people running across these teams, and some of these teams are only two or three people. Um, but we also have this um, flexible cross-skilled team members. So it's one thing that Agile promotes is that people cross-skill within the team. So our learning technologists aren't traditional learning technologists. Um, I don't know if you see it. Elliot is currently doing a, a, a data um, apprenticeship. As he's, a, he's a senior learning technologist. He's working on our team doing a, a data apprenticeship. He's going to be looking at um, analytics and components and getting more involved technically in what is probably a, a reasonably technical team. But we bring aspects of uh, like learning technologists, that engagement with our academics and with our administrators into teams so we get those feedback cycles. And having those cross-skilled team members working across a sort of what might be considered a standard technical project product, sorry, um, brings a, a, a re really live discussion and uh, enables ideas. And at the bottom, I've got a couple of vendors mentioned. Um, this is specifically around um, our upgrade. And the reason I put them here is that what we've done with Agile is that we've extended the boundaries of our Agile team, our Agile product team, to include our vendors. So during our upgrade process, we've had um, developers from our vendors embedded into our product teams. So they would come to um, our, come to, on to our, our meetings, our stand-ups and our discussions and they would be there as a member of the team. And that elicited much faster communication. We were able to spin things around a lot quicker. And, and the other way around, we, working with, the, with Titus on our, our new theme for Moodle, our UI UX team 
we're able to interact directly with our end users, do lots of user cycle. They're going to be talking about this at four o'clock, by the way. But then they would be able to spin out and engage with Titus, who are also running, as you will find, is that most vendors and developers are actually running Agile teams already. So having one Agile team interfacing with another Agile team works really well because the, the cycle, the cadence of that delivery becomes intertwined with each other and they feed off each other. And again, enabling us to move faster and develop um, new components and also adapt to the changes that we get from our end users much more quickly. So, what is Agile about in actual day-to-day -day operations and how we do it? So, very, this is key. So, we have something called Agile Ceremonies. Um, which basically are meetings. Okay? Let's, just, let's, let's call them up. They are meetings. And when we started Agile two years ago, one of the biggest complaints from our team was, God, we have so many meetings. They, they, these meetings are going to get in the way of what we do. Two years down the line, we now realize how essential these ceremonies and meetings are. So the way it works at UCL, our entire information services group, all the, the portfolios, meet every 12 weeks for a massive planning session. All work stops and we all come together and work in our product teams on what we're going to be doing for the next 12 weeks. At that point, myself as product manager, I'll be saying, right, this is what I want to happen. And the team will go, okay, how do you want it to happen? I'll say, like this. And they go, okay, we're going to go and work out how we're going to do that. And they will write user stories, feature stories about delivering the things that I want. But at the same time, they're in the same room building with all the other people that they may need to interact with to look at dependencies. And those teams are looking at cross dependencies. And it brings together a, a much, an amazing atmosphere of cooperation amongst the whole of information services. So you've got your database teams, you've got your networking teams, and you're, everyone's talking to each other, security's there, overseeing things. And you have this massive collaboration. And it, 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 it really has enabled UCL to, to speed up its development cycles, its process cycles, and its interactions within in the organization. Once that is over, we, we come away with a tw basically a 12-week plan of what we're going to be doing. We then drop into a two-weekly sprint cycle. So the following Monday, we start the sprint and it runs for two weeks. We have a two-week cadence and that's what our work will be defined by. At the start of that two weeks, we have a sprint planning session that lasts for two hours where the team decides what they are working on and what they will deliver within that week. Sorry, within those two weeks. I don't decide it. I listen in. They ask me questions. They go, what do you want us to get done this one? Which is your priority? And I tell them. And they sort it out. They build their work structures. They make their decisions, which is incredibly empowering for the team. We then move into daily stand-ups. Every day, the feature teams have a 15-minute stand-up where they just check in with each other. Because obviously, since COVID, most of us are remote now. So we have team meetings. We come together and go, all right, this is what I'm doing today. And I've got a problem here. I've got a little bit of a blocker. Can someone help me with this? Or everything's fine. Sometimes those meetings last the full 15 minutes. Sometimes it's like three, four minutes. And everyone goes, yeah, great. We'll, we'll just carry on. And it was underpinned at the moment by, by Jira, which is our Jira technology, where all our stories, our features, and everything is logged, and people maintain of where they are in sequence. So we always pull up the Jira board and see where we are, what's being completed, what's not being done, and have a quick discussion. And then at the end of that two-week cycle, we, the whole product, all the feature teams come together and perform a retrospective. They go, how did we do? What could be better in the way we interacted? And they, they, they reflect just like learners reflect on what they were doing. And out of that comes so many benefits. And that, that's one of the areas that we did not get when we started. We, we, we couldn't understand why we needed this retrospective. And it wasn't until we started, we got, we got some um, coaching on this, that it really became so powerful an item. And then at the end of the week, we have this spin review demo. And this is where we actually get our end users the people we're working to deliver this, these pieces of technology for to come in and look at what we're doing. What have we done this week, this, in these two weeks? In this sprint, we've done this. What do you think of that? Do you want to give us some feedback? Oh, I don't like that color. Actually, that interface is a little bit wonky. That's not what I meant when I told you about it. And that iterative approach means that the next week, the guys have already rewritten the stories or redesigned what they're doing. And we've, we haven't lost any time. That's it, underpinned all by Jira. So, what, how does this affect our Moodle deployment this year? So we moved from Moodle 3.11 to Moodle 
Um, and this is just a sort of a, a short window on, on a slightly wider project. So this is from March to July. We delivered, um, I think it was the 27th of July, we went live with our deployment. We, we actually planned to deploy the last week of July, six months prior to this. And that's, how, that's what our planning enables us. We said, in six months' time, in that week, we're going to deploy. And everything was aligned to that. And our vendors were aware of that. They went, oh, you're, you're telling us six months in advance that you're going to deploy. Yeah. You sure? Yeah, we're sure. And that enables us to plan so much better than we previously did before. So just showing, this was just sort of a, a little bit of fluff around here showing what we did, um, talking about demo sites and things that we engage with users. What I really want to talk about is the sort of structure that underpins this. This is what Agile enables us to do. And for me, as, a, as, as a, the product manager at UCL, or one of the senior stakeholders, I can see all the work streams that my teams have planned out. I can see all the interdependencies. I know what's happening literally on a, a sprint basis. We can see when things may be going askew, may be going awry, or what's going right, where the interdependencies are. When a team says, actually, we're going to need, a, we're going to need another Moodle spun up in sprint three, the, the ops team go, yeah, I, I've got that on my board. I know we need to get that ready for you. It, it will be ready for you incredibly powerful. Now, specifically talking about the teams that I had, I'm going to speed up a little bit here. <clears throat> the training and communications team. This was a, one of our transient teams that only lasted for three months. It came in um, at the end of March and com their work completed when we went live with the deployment. And their sole purpose was to ensure that the institution was aware and engaged that documentation existed for both our staffs and students and to provide training and one thing that we found that we learned from conversations here last year and with conversations with other UK HEs is that the message about the Moodle upgrade is the most important thing and this in a way forget the technology this was pretty much the, um, the most important team doing the work and I'll, I'll show you why in a moment, but this team literally bled to inform and engage with the users to create that, that feedback cycle to make sure that they were aware, we understood what their, their fears were, and to basically to remove those fears. User UI team. Again, another transient team. They're still operating. They're basically their lifespan with timetable for 18 months. Um, they were originally formed about last October. We had an idea of how we were going to change our theme, and it went disastrously wrong. We suddenly realised, I mean, well, I realised in October, I was like, this is not, this not going to deliver. Not my original plans of how we're going to do a new theme, we're going to do it internally, in-house, with, with our current resources and knowledge, we went, yeah, then this isn't going to work. And within the space of a sprint, we were able to turn that failure around, I wouldn't even call it a failure, but turn that um, issue around into a positive, say, right, we're going to go like this, and we will instantly engage with a vendor. We're going to get a UI UX specialist in. And within the space of two complete, two complete sprints, we had that team up running and already engaging with our users, getting feedback on a new theme, and creating that cycle between UCL and our vendor Titus and with our end users. And that enabled us to deliver a whole new theme with the brand new upgrade on top of everything else. Underpinning all of this, is our code base and ops team, so our SRE ops team. So all the time, they have to maintain the current environment, they have to make sure everything works, they have to keep it running, but they're also reviewing the code base with each Moodle release, when 4 came out, when 4.1 came out, when 4. every single one they were reviewing. They were building automated tests to, to, to run on everything. Um, and this is well, I'll, again, I'll come into this one. Well. We developed pipelines for deployment. We automated tests with BHAT, et cetera, to make sure that when, that, because obviously we have a small team, we don't have a huge amount of time. So we have to be lean. We have to reduce waste in the system. And, and the way you reduce waste is you automate. So, very quickly getting towards the end benefits for agile practice on the upgrade that we experience at UCL tight feedback loops with stakeholders. With an iterative development process, there are no surprises. Every week, every day, we were speaking to users. They were telling us, this isn't right. We had instances of 4, 4.1, 4.2, up, 
prior to we went anywhere near deployment. Each of those instances had iterative versions of the new theme. As we built it, it was there for our users. They could engage with it. They could feedback directly to the teams. And from that, we built a better theme and a better product all the way through. We found out things that were missing from our dashboard. So we built some new plugins to put into that dashboard. And that type of feedback, as I said, enables you to pivot so quickly. Um, lean teams with a focus on knowledge. I said lean is a, is a word about automation, really. Um, it, it enables faster delivery and deployment. And it makes, it makes the team empowered to make decisions. Cross-functional team members, I've sort of already mentioned, adaptability and flexibility. And also, by, it's a sort of combination, but empowering your team members and making them cross-functional, you're not only empowering them in the work that they do, you're empowering their personal development. Our team gets stronger because they have the ability to decide where they are going, what they're doing, what technologies they are, they are using. We still have governance, but the team works how the team wants to work. And that is critically important in any Agile implementation. If you think you can go in and say, well, I'm going to have a team running Agile, but we're going to tell them what to do, it will fail. This, my favorite slide, this was our institutional reaction to our Moodle upgrade. <laughs> the best ever reaction that we have got, it was nothing. It, our old service went down at 1 a.m. in the morning, they came up at 6, and there wasn't a whisper. Everybody knew what was going on. Everyone knew what the new platform would look like. Everyone knew the new functionality on that platform. The academics and our administrators just engaged with it. Sure, there's the normal problems that you get on a day-to-day -day with running any large system, but compared to where we used to be after an upgrade, and those, those problems that last for, oh my God, we've got to get this fixed, and that's gone wrong, and that's because they didn't tell us they were going to be running a summer school, and nothing. It was, it was beautiful. And the calmness in the team, you know, the black week everyone was like, yeah, we're upgrading, it's great. And the senior management, what, 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 what do you mean? Is, is it yeah, yeah, it's great. So my favorite slide, and that's our reaction at UCL. Just very quickly running through now because I'm nearly out of time. This was our old mood on. This goes flash up a couple of images. But if you want to see a lot more about it, as I said, our UI UX team are presenting this afternoon at four o'clock and talking about their specific journey about engagement and how they developed. So that was our old Moodle, our new Moodle. That was our old Moodle dashboard, our new Moodle dashboard. We've added lots of functionality. Our old courses, ugh. Our new, our new courses, a bit better. And the thing is, all of this was built through user engagement. And the great thing is, it's not finished. When we delivered our Moodle at the end of July, we went, yeah, here it is, but it's not done yet, because that's not how Agile works. We, we want your feedback now. We've delivered it to you. We can get more feedback, more iterative development. And that's where we are now. That's why our feature teams for UI UX are still running. At the moment, they're, they're, they're wrapping up on the design around the, the actual theme and starting on course formats. So, takeaways. Agile is a mindset, first and foremost. Yes, it, it's a lovely tool, it can be called lots of things, but it has to be a mindset, it has to be embedded in the people who use it. The team have to be empowered, they have to know about this. And the Agile mindset, the most important people to know that and support it is the leaders of your organization. If you do not have a leadership that are committing to Agile delivery and an Agile mindset, your Agile teams will not be supported and they will fail. They'll, they'll distrust the system, the, the loops will stop working, they won't engage with users. So, for me, mindset over everything. Also, we always aim to bring value to our stakeholders now. We think about what we're doing. The team are empowered, I've mentioned several times. Reducing waste in the system, so automate where possible. Now, this ties in with DevOps. Um, that's a talk for another time. Um, probably for my tech league, as Spark. We're, we're, we're doing a lot more in creating a, a DevOps atmosphere, so automated pipelines, automated delivery, automated testing, automated push. And at some point, I know that Alice is hoping to release some of those pipelines out to the, the community. Um, the other, underpinning everything, I, I love this one. If something does not deliver or enable value to your stakeholders, that could be your students, that could be your staff, you have to ask yourselves, why are you doing it? Because all you're doing is you're wasting time and resources and money and not getting anything out of it. That when, we, when we started on this journey, we had so much waste in the system at UCL. And this activity of moving to Agile 
has created a, a much better atmosphere for everybody. Thank you very much. That's pretty much my presentation done. Just want to share this on my slide. You can look. There's a couple of resources. Then go and look at um, the digital education team blog, where it sort of basically documents the journey that we went through, our, all our communication with end users. Um, also, the UCL has a, a um, Confluence wiki where we open publish all our resource guides. Anyone's you know, just go in there. It may be UCL focused, but I'm sure there's probably some documentation that some people might find useful. It's all Creative Commons licensed. Just grab it off the slides. My UX team are talking this afternoon. Quick advertisement with them and on to questions. Thank you very much. Any quote? Yep, done that. Hi. Hi. Um, I haven't heard anything about Scrum. Are you scrumming or are you agiling? Um, for us, the, the two sort of blend together. So we use a framework at UCL called, um, safe. thank you, SAFE, um, which is an, uh, it's an agile framework. Um, it is scrum, but we, we turn, for the institution, they, they change the, some of the terminology. We don't have scrum masters, we have agile delivery managers. Um, but the, 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 the SAFE framework, um, is, it, is a framework based around Scrum, based about an enterprise level implementation of Agile, yeah? Um, using Agile release training. If you know, if you know a bit more, so it's all about Agile release training, so I didn't want to go down that route because I know it's confusing for a lot of people. Um, but we basically use a sort of a mini release train within our product to, to do our deployments and our work. Um, but yeah, we, it's, it's not a traditional scum, Scrum, sorry, because while the, while the framework is a safe framework, we are empowered to run our product teams in whichever methodology we want and fits the situation. So for example, Scrum wouldn't work for a support team. So we have a connected su educational support team who are running more Kanban. They're not running two weekly sprints because that doesn't work for their support types. So they would run a Kanban and they would pull issues to them themselves. Is that okay? Thanks. Might have time for one, one quick one. It's down the back there. How many people were you in this process? How many people in, 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 in our information services? Um, just under 500. But within, within, like I said, within my product team, there's 10. Yeah, okay. Okay.